Hey, welcome to part five. Uh, this will be a relatively quick lesson where we talk about only my favorite tool in Maya, which is QuadDraw. So, to get started, we're going to bring in some reference. I'll go into my usual orthographic view, load up the swirl, and in this case I'll show you guys how to do some filigree type stuff with QuadDraw. And we're going to go to the attribute editor, drop that alpha gain just like normal, go to the modeling toolkit, and click on quad draw. If we scroll down, we'll see that we have some options. We'll go over those later. For now, let me just give you the, the lowdown on quad draw. Um, the most important thing is you click one, two, three, and four times. These are essentially vertices. And what Maya is going to do is when you hold down the shift key, it will create a new polygon for you um, right between those vertices. Now what were to happen if I had five points? What it's going to do is it's going to give you the different options for creating a quad. Um, it, this tool really prefers for you to work in um, quads, so we'll work with that. So we can go anywhere around these, we can hold shift, and now that we have something started, uh, we can work from there. Uh, what you're going to do is you can click and drag just normally left mouse on points, edges, or faces to adjust them. So you can take any of these and you know manipulate them in any which way. If I hold control shift it will allow me to delete faces, delete edge loops, or you know I can delete the edge like that. Now if I place another point I can hold shift, create it. For this it only takes one point and then we can just you know start working our way around if you need to remove points, um, meaning the green dots that are essentially the vertices, uh, I guess Maya refers to them as dots. I usually call them points, but uh, that's just force of habit referring to vertices. Hold Control Shift and delete them. And then let's see what happens if we delete that. It deletes the whole section. So Control Shift deletes that whole section. Um, next, and probably one of the handiest things about Quadra is holding tab. This is one of the only times that you're actually going to really need tab inside of a tool for Maya. So we just hold tab and left mouse and we extend. Now look what happens if we get a vertex close enough to another one. It merges it there and allows us to uh, you know, totally merge that without having to go into target weld, without having to go into mesh uh, merge components. It's a very fast method for modeling. Now what happens if I take tab and middle mouse? What it's going to do is it's going to take the entire edge loop, just like that. Uh, this is incredibly helpful, so all you have to do is switch between left mouse and middle mouse uh, to get to, uh, to get to the extend command. Let's see, also if we hold tab and we're outside of the um, object that we're working on, we can drag out strips of polygons. So what we'll do is just draw out a strip. Now if you use middle mouse while holding tab outside of your object, you can change the size of the actual polygon. Oops. So there we go. And we'll just delete, oops, delete uh, that one, and merge these across, fix that, and there we have it. We have a nice new strip. So I'm just going to delete that, delete this, and those are the main hotkeys. Now, what about actually using this to create um, geometry? First, I'm going to grab this, go to the attribute editor, and change the texture filter to bilinear, 
It's going to give me a little bit better result. Let's try nearest. Trilinear. Nah, it looks like bilinear was the easiest. So I go to Quadra, and I place my first four points right there. And use Tab, bring it over, bring it all the way over. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you hold Control, you can insert an edge loop just like in uh, Multicut. So Control, drag there, and drag this across. Control one more time there to match that curve. Almost done with this section. Oops. There we go. We've got that section. Now I'm going to go to Quadra again, of course. And sometimes it makes it a little hard for us to actually create new th faces just because the proximity of other ones. So I'll just make that face over there and then move it over. Now I'm going to go a little broader here and fix it more with edge loops rather than placing all of these from the get-go. So just like that, I'll hold control, adjust, adjust move across, oops, control, drag, drag. Then I'm going to put an edge loop right here. And I'm going to take my extend, take just this one edge, insert an edge loop, fix up these and we'll continue doing this down this section and I'm gonna call it there but this is how you're gonna work your way around these objects notice that it's very simple I didn't add a thousand lines going down, you know, the side or going up. It's pretty much as efficient as it can be, and that's the way you want to work when you're working with quad draw. You do not need high numbers of edge loops uh, when you're working inside of quad draw. But you'll notice that this object is still very flat and one-sided. That's why it's dark on the other side, because the normals are pointing this way. So what I'm going to do is, in object mode, select it and extrude, and just bring it forward a little bit. This gives it, this gives it thickness. If I press 3, it rounds it off nicely. I could then, of course, go into multi-cut, hold control, and add some edge loops. That sharpened it up a little bit, and I think that's where I would leave it if I were doing some like wrought iron filigree because it does have a little bit of a softness to it, and I think that that is appealing. I would, however, add some edge loops right there, and right there. And I think I'd leave it there. So, very complex shapes can be created with multi-cut. Um, I'm going to show you one of my models um, that was made using primarily multi-cut, then extrude, and quadra. Sorry, it was primarily made with quadra, multi-cut, and extrude. Uh, I was, got that backwards. So I'm gonna pause that just for a second. All right, so this compound bow was created entirely, or mostly using quadra. If we zoom in and turn on wireframe, we'll be able to see that wireframe nicely. Notice again that it is very efficient, the topology works nicely, the edges flow well. I'm able to get those edge loops that I want to actually um, to actually get 
that smooth shape. If I turn off the wireframe, you can see that it smooths quite nicely. It doesn't have any errors. Um, it's got nice topology. It's got a lot of poles, but that's okay. Um, we also have this piece of geometry, which I'll isolate to show you. Um, all of these holes were cut out using quad draw. Um, and cut out is the wrong word because they, it was just made without putting anything in there. So it was more like I was just taking into account the holes from the very beginning, uh, which made it relatively easy to make um, compared to cutting in those holes later and worrying about the topology. So anyways, Quadra, again, very powerful tool. Um, you can use it for all sorts of things, logos, um, swords, just really anything that can start flat. Um, Quadra can also be used to retopologize characters, meaning you take your high poly and set that object to live, and then Quadra will constrain to the surface. That's really the only time that you ever use Quadra not in an orthographic view, uh, when you use it in perspective. But um, with that, I think I'll end part five where we talk about Quadra. Um, I'll see you in the next lesson where I believe we're going to start materials. Yep, I'll see you then.